Is it better to fight climate change or adapt to it? Why can't we do both? Hey everyone, Trace here for DNews. Coral reefs are a crucial part of our ecosystem. They're living creatures supporting thousands of species of fish, including many kinds that we eat. In 2006, there were two corals on the endangered species list. But last year, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration added to the list 20 new coral species. Many factors are leading to their decline, like overfishing, pollution from coastal development, and agricultural runoff, as well as ocean warming and acidification. Even the sunscreen we wear on the beach is contributing to a phenomenon called bleaching. Bleaching is when a coral expels the symbiotic algae that gives it color and provides the coral's energy source. By the end of 2015, it's estimated that nearly 95% of U.S. coral reefs will be exposed to bleaching conditions, but there still may be hope. What we are doing is attempting to come up with a solution for the immediate problem that we see on reefs now. That's Ruth Gates, director of the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology. That is to breed corals or develop coral stocks that are able to withstand the conditions that are predicted for the future. Warmer waters and more acidic waters. Dr. Gates has been studying coral for three decades, witnessing these animals go from vibrant underwater cathedrals to dead, colorless fields of rubble. She and her researchers are helping corals adapt to a changing environment more rapidly than if they were left on their own. We are taking adult corals and giving them experiences that we hope will translate to the next generation. If we think the adult is a super performer, we want to know whether or not the, uh, the, this next generation is also a super performer. These super corals had offspring that were better able to withstand harsher conditions. We've been able to effect a change in their biology in a very short period of time that allow them to now be more resistant to stress. Now the researchers have to wait and see how these lab-conditioned corals perform out in their natural habitat. Gates's work is not a one-size-fits-all solution. Different species of coral adapt to different environmental conditions in different parts of the world. The next challenge will be to figure out how to breed super-performing coral on a larger scale. You may not be a scientist, but there are things that you can do to help the environment, like simply making smarter choices about food that you eat, like seafood. To learn more about that and other things, check out racingextinction.com. There's a ton of great info about what you can do to make a difference out there. Thanks for watching DNews, everyone. Let us know down in the comments what you're doing to help the environment as a whole, and keep coming back here every day for more videos.